Welcome to the Absite Smackdown podcast. We'll talk clinical scenarios, Absite facts, and interesting general surgery knowledge. Now, let's get to it. Hey guys, it's me, Jess, your host of Absite Smackdown podcast. And with me today, as always, Dr. David Kashmir, but we do have a new face and it is Dr. Muhammad Darwish. Hi, Dr. Darwish. How are you today? I'm doing well. Nice to meet you both. Well, good to be here with you both today, uh, Jessica. And if you'll allow me, I'll introduce to the listeners and watchers, uh, Muhammad Darwish. Uh, Muhammad is originally from the United Arab Emirates. He came to the United States to further his surgical training. And now he's a categorical PGY2 at a residency in uh, Las Vegas. Uh, so he's a member of the Project SmackDown team. Come uh, on with us for the first time today. And he and I share a lot of outside interests, including uh, 3D printing, uh, and some of the other technical stuff we're trying to evolve nowadays in surgery. So I couldn't be gladder, or more glad, I guess I should say, to have him here with us today. Uh, with that, I look forward to the topic of the day with you both. The Absite SmackDown podcast is going live. Reserve your seat for our upcoming live Absite review conference. Can't travel? On call? No problem. This online conference is recorded so you can catch up anytime. Reserve your spot by visiting us at AbsiteSmackdown.com and selecting Latest News for more information. Oh, that's perfect. Common interests are always a bonus. So um, today we were one of the teams found an article that we're just going to touch on a little bit, and it's about the how certain character traits um, associated with residents make for more outstanding. And we're going to, of course, link that below so you can read the full article since we only hit the high points. But um, as we were talking about this off camera, it was really interesting. The three points that they say are the best, um, you know, how that comes to be. So Dr. K, you want to go into that a little bit? Well, sure, Jessica. Uh, the article you're referring to is called Characteristics Associated with Outstanding General Surgery Residency Graduate Performance uh, as Rated by Surgical Educators. And it's from Purdy et al. I know you guys will drop the um, citation uh, down beneath this. It's very hot off the press. It's just from August. And basically, they had a team of experts that got together and tried to tease out what makes for success among surgical residents. And they kind of settled out some of the things with a Likert scale, so these uh, five or six point scales, and they rated residents and tried to see what shook out in terms of what made for success. I'll tell you, I thought the findings were super interesting. The Absite Smackdown podcast is based on the best-selling review book, Absite Smackdown, the only Absite review with an entire video review course included. Visit AbsiteSmackdown.com and pick it up today. That said, uh, what the team came to eventually was certain things that we hear about all the time in modern surgical education. Uh, there was a real focus on, it, more than almost any other factor, surgical judgment. Uh, there were several, like you said, uh, the main outcome measures and results included um, higher scores in every characteristic correlated with overall better performance, but are more strongly associated with higher overall performance uh, when it came to surgical judgment, uh, leadership, post-operative uh, care for their patients, and pre-operative clinical care. Uh, it turns out the remainder of the characteristics were just sort of moderately associated with things. And three characteristics, and only three from all the ones they came up with, Three were uh, I, were associated with overall resident performance and could accurately predict, without even measuring the other qualities, how surgical residents were going to be. And again, that's surgical judgment, uh, for sure, uh, leadership, and medical knowledge. So with that said, fascinating to me, because as you know, we talk about all the time how surgical judgment is key and how when we sit at M&M, we read Gordon's Guide to the m m we actually least commonly directly talk about judgment. We have all these modern tools for decision-making, and we often, I think, in my experience, maybe don't leverage those as much as we could as surgical educators. We don't often explicitly teach judgment. We just sort of have m ms as cautionary tales for people to take what they want from it. Attendings typically are very careful not to impugn each other's judgment, uh, definitely not directly. And I think in some ways uh, that can be really challenging because most surgical issues, in fact, are due to judgment. 
Um, if you look at, again, Gordon's Guide to the M&M and some other famous books at it. So I'm super interested to hear after that long-winded approach, uh, what our colleague Muhammad, Dr. Darwish, thinks about it. Because to me, it's fascinating. Surgical judgment seems to be the thing. And yet nowadays, uh, it, we don't focus on it. I don't know that we ever really have, in my experience. We don't focus on it as explicitly or as much as we could. I totally agree with, Dr. with you, Dr. Kashmir. That's a um, very interesting point. And um, one of the things I'd like to point out in this paper specifically is when they ranked all these um, uh, skills they looked at, including test taking, those things ranked lower on the list and the more clinically oriented skills ranked higher on the list. Um, however, medical knowledge was still up there, but split apart from the test taking skills. Um, and I think that's very important to point out, especially, you know, I'm still a junior resident and for interns coming in, we put a lot of emphasis on the exam taking part of residency with the app site and whatnot, which is important. But it's still very important to be at the bedside, see the patient, look at their clinical changes, and build this intangible clinical skill for you to pick up when things are going to go wrong. Um, so I totally agree with this what, with what this paper is saying um, and with splitting these two things, uh, medical knowledge and test taking, mm -hmm. very different uh, skills to have. You know, to pick up on what you're saying, and another thing that's fascinating to me, Jessica and Mohammed is, you know, we have these six core competencies we're supposed to teach residents. Systems-based practice, practice-based learning, communication, medical knowledge, patient care. And yet on rounds every day, it's typically medical knowledge tour de force if we take time to really focus on anything. Um, when I round with a resident team, I usually, we start off uh, mentioning the six core competencies. We all take turns uh, saying one until somebody gets stumped. And at first we're like, oh gosh, you get stumped easily. But then we learn and we remember them. And what's super interesting is two things. Uh, first, for some reason, we often forget the patient care one. Uh, I don't know why, but then we get that. But the other thing is that we try every day to pick a different competency so that they're not just medical knowledge that we're discussing every day. So very fascinating to me that and I'm glad medical knowledge made the list clearly. But things like leadership, judgment, that we don't spend every day harping on on rounds or you know when the attending may give that uh, useful piece of information. I think that's super interesting uh, that uh, surgical judgment emerged. And again, I just don't know that we focus on it so much. I was actually surprised by the leadership one out of all of the top three. That was the one that I was like, okay, I wonder how that how that goes over. But you were saying off camera a little earlier that part of um, maybe what makes this a little harder, especially with clinical, is the fact that it's the, the shortened work week now um, with being able to get that in. So, Well, in some ways, what I mean by that is, and just to clarify, we say it all the time, the 80-hour work week isn't going away. It's not going away. It has pluses and minuses. Um, some may say it aids in retention, for what is taught. Some may say it leads to episodic care because uh, uh, resident physicians can't see the whole continuum of care as much as they used to be able to. Bottom line is pluses and minuses. And so I think it's important for us to use different tools uh, since the ADR work week started to teach things like judgment, et cetera, to explicitly teach them instead of just thinking that the resident staff are going to see so many things in so many ways that they're going to pick it up. That sometimes gets called brute force training when it's just so many repetitions, they kind of see all the bad and all the good. And bottom line is we can't really rely on that anymore for what's produced by residency. So before Jessica, when I said that, what I meant was um, we need different tools. Uh, if surgical judgment keeps emerging is so important, and I think it is, I think it is the one, we really need to make a, um, a way of being able to talk about it, talk about it explicitly and directly while we maintain collegiality with our other colleagues, uh, because again, it, it seems to be the thing. I think those were all really great points and um, moving, I don't want to just change the subject so swiftly, but I did want to get on just because since Dr. Darwish is kind of new to you guys on the team, more about him, his experiences, um, especially 
because he came in as preliminary and we, we do talk about the ab site. He's seen some of our podcasts. He's part of the team now. And so we want to get a little bit about his experience, um, last year versus this year, what his plan was last year, how he felt coming in. Now we're in like month one of having all the new residents come in his experience being the second year in like seeing those new people, how he's feeling and what his plan is. So do you mind talking about that just a little bit, Dr. Darwish? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so when I started last year as a prelim, um, obviously the first couple of months, it's always overwhelming. You know, there's so much to learn. There's so many new things. Uh, one of the things um, I felt that helped me up front was just listening to my seniors, uh, right? They've, they've done this before. They've been in, you know, in my shoes not too many years ago. Um, and um, just picking up on those mistakes that they tell you about that they've done so you can avoid them. Um, obviously you will make mistakes. We all make mistakes and that's part of residency. That's how you learn. Uh, but just staying consistent uh, up front and, and just staying on top of things on a daily basis. I think that's one of the main things. Um, one of the cliche things everybody tells you is, you know, be early and stay late if you have to. And that works, you know, especially as an intern where you're overwhelmed and you're still not good with your time management and you're keeping up. And I think that's, that was a helpful thing up front. Obviously now, you know, I can manage my time better. I don't need to do that as often, but I still do it when I have to. Um, so yeah, the prelim year, especially the first six months was a lot to learn. I enjoyed it a lot. I love surgery. Um, so that was a lot of fun. And um, obviously as a prelim, there's this always baseline anxiety about having to match uh, while studying for the app site and doing all of that stuff, but overall enjoyed it a lot. Um, one of the key things with app sites specific since we emphasize, emphasize this is um, um, studying a little early, uh, smaller amounts, more consistently over a longer time, I think was uh, one of the biggest things that helped me. Um, I'm not the kind of person that likes to cram, um, even though you always have to towards the you know last month before the exam. Uh, but being consistent is one of the main things that I took to this year. So I've already started studying slowly for the exam almost two months ago and very small amounts, but every single day. And then I ramp it up as I get closer to the exam, right? Um, and obviously going into PGY2, I started with trauma with Dr. Palacio. And the amount of autonomy you get as a PGY2 is also a little overwhelming in your first month on trauma, but I loved it. I learned so much. It was an amazing experience. And um, the intern year can be overwhelming and scary, but you know, to all the interns, when you get to your PGY2, things will start getting a lot better because now you kind of know what you're doing a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's yeah. funny. You put, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dr. K. <laughs> well, uh, no, I was just going to say, I really like the fact that you're making a consistent study plan and you're just so far ahead of where I was when I was in that year. <laughs> well, I'll also share with you uh, the, the come early, stay late mentality. Um, that's part of what I found to be so useful about how the Absite Smackdown tool is created because it allows you to have the videos that match the review book and audio anytime, anywhere. So for people who are on night shift or people who are sitting around the lounge because you have a couple minutes before a case or anything in between, um, it was really hard to get to an absite review course uh, when I was a resident. Um, there are some really good ones and they're sometimes hard to get to, although that can be improving. And so the absite Smackdown tool and the video live review conference that you guys do, Jessica, that's part of why I like this so much. Uh, because, you know, a book that sits on the shelf is not so useful. But a book that you have in your pocket at any time with the video content or the live lectures, you know, that really makes it useful. And that tool would have been super useful for me to help keep the study plan on pace. The Absite Smackdown podcast. Visit the Smackdown at AbsiteSmackdown.com. I mean, to be fair, you guys didn't really have these everywhere when you're age, and now, now we do, so it's a little different. But some of the things that I love that Dr. Darwish um, just hit on, and it's like, I do feel he's so far ahead because we always talk about the mentorship, find someone, you know, look to the people that are in the program for mentorship to help you. He's already doing that. He started studying very early, small amounts, not cramming, like his time management, speaking on that, like he stair-stepped us all the way through everything that we tell people 
that you should be doing it and he's doing it. Like he's perfect yeah. example. That's, that's just so nice to see. Cause I don't feel like we get a lot of people on here saying, yes, I'm doing this. I'm doing this. Yeah. I'm doing this. It's that's well, good. I did this and I should do better on this. And he's here just like, Oh, this is all the things we say and he's doing yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, other things that we mentioned in the book and we took care to do include what you just said. And then also some of the tips that I didn't realize, like taking a vacation before the ab site is associated with a higher score. You get rested up, you get some time. So if you can try to look ahead to when your group is giving the ab site or your residency is giving the ab site um, so that all the tips you just talked about. And then, of course, we have that section in the book that talks about things like that. Uh, and remember, you know, your question volume also correlates with a score to some degree. So you need to work those in as you do everything. So the headline is, yeah, it's great to hear. Uh, it's good to have a study plan and he's using all the tips. That's good. It's funny that you mentioned vacation. So last January, when we did the live conference last January, um, afterwards, when we were getting like feedback emails and stuff, one of the feedback emails we got was from a doctor who was on vacation. She was literally on the beach on vacation. Oh, she, yeah. Like she was taking the vacation before she was going to be doing ab site. And she was just like logging into our conference. Like when she was just at the hotel that night, like to do studying on vacation, which I'm like, okay, well you're on vacation. <laughs> but I just found that interesting. Like she listened, she went on vacation before and then still logged into the conference. So she got to be on the beach all day and still log on to the conference. And I'm like, that is when I feel good about what we're doing. <laughs> we can make yeah. it easy for everybody. But it's just that's not just a bad crazy. life. It's not, not <laughs> right. a bad life. Way yeah. worse. So, yeah. all right, Dr. Darwish, anything else you want to say or questions you have before we wrap up today? Um, I don't have any particular questions today. Thank you for having me. Well, it was so wonderful to have you on. We're so excited to have you be part of the team. Dr. K, as always, you are awesome. Oh, and just a quick reminder again. So the conference, the next live conference that we're going to have for AppSite Study is going to be September 10th, 11th, 12th. And again, it's in the evenings. It's recorded. So if you do, if you're on call, if you're anywhere, if you want to have to log out and get back in, then it's there for you. You can rewatch it and it's going to be awesome. So Dr. K, anything else before we wrap up? No, I just, I find it amazing that surgical judgment keeps falling out as the thing that we feel yeah. is uh, something that makes for great residents. And I think as educators, uh, we can focus more explicitly on teaching surgical judgment, how we do it, some of the tools to have good judgment. You know, the primary mechanism right now is looking back on what we did in m, &M to learn from errors. Some, uh, or even if it's not an error, just when it wasn't quite as good as it could have been. It focus very, focuses very much on the personal part we could have done, or we could have drawn the lab, or we could have gone left or right. And, and there's a real value to that. And yet there are there's an arsenal of additional tools to help us make good choices, especially with incomplete data, long hours, or challenging patients. So I hope one day soon, as we continue to see evidence like this, we start to break out those tools and work them into surgery more and more. I think it's going to be super useful. And I'm excited about the conference. Last year's was great. I think what you guys have on tap this year is going to be even better. So I look forward to it. I think it's a good way to get together, do questions, get through all the material, and hopefully perform the best we can on the ab site. Well, awesome. And it sounds like we need another book from what you just said. No pressure or anything, but I mean. <laughs> I'll put it on the schedule. <laughs> Give me like five years, okay? like five years. I think I have I'll such get a big another. team. I'll loan them to you. <laughs> so anyways, all right, guys. Well, thanks for being here with me. And as always, hashtag Absite Smackdown. Get more Absite content in your daily routine. Visit us on Instagram at daily.absite.fact, on Facebook at Absite Smackdown, or LinkedIn at Absite Smackdown. And you can catch the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or any place you listen to your favorites. Don't forget our YouTube channel, Absite Smackdown. <laughs>